Uh, hello, thanks uh, for coming to my talk about what is Krakem, tool for chaos testing. I am Yulia Tidlačková and I am intern in Red Hat in chaos team. Uh, I will try to introduce you a little bit into what is chaos testing and then I will briefly introduce you to Crack and how to use it, some test strategies and methodologies, how to use it, how to install it, and some encouragement and tips. And I give you some helpful resources. So is there anyone who actually knows what is Kraken? Okay, and have anyone of you actually use it? Okay, fine, because this is for absolute beginners, someone who never heard about it, never use it. Uh, okay, so why chaos testing matters? There are various reasons why system may be affected, like uh, outage of app, network, uh, some uh, limitations on network, bandwidth limitations, something change, some change in a, uh, configuration, etc. Anything can break in any moment. And this is the reason why it's chaos testing is nice. Uh, you can try to break your system to mimic some system uh, changes, behavior, unexpected conditions, and see how your system responds to it. Uh, under uh, where you are observing it. So you can then take this insight and try to improve and optimize your, your system. And in the long run, long run, you can save money because of it, because uh, failures in productions are more expensive, as we can see in the real world. For example, with Taylor Swift and uh, Ticketmaster contro controversy, when uh, because of the Ticketmaster didn't, couldn't handle so massive demand, the site crashed the price of the ticket skyrocketed and it's led to several lawsuits. Or maybe about the Facebook services outage in 2021, which took like seven or seven hours because of faulty configuration. Or British Airways in 2017 had uh, disconnected power supply to British Airways data center, which led to a few services not being, or few, many services not being <laughs> available which led to 1,000, more than 1,000 flights being grounded and uh, estimated cost was 58 million pounds in passenger compensations. So, uh, chaos testing generally aims to complex systems like clouds. Uh, Kraken is aiming to chaos test OpenShift and Kubernetes systems and applications running on it. Uh, you can point to specific cluster by kubeconfig, which you are passing in a config of Kraken. And uh, in this config, you can also select which uh, chaos scenarios you want to inject into the system. We offer multiple chaos scenarios. One of them are, for example, disruption of system and applications running on the port, uh, running as pods or containers. We also offer a zone application and power outages maybe scenarios which are hogging memory and CPU, and many more. Like, there is a huge list. I don't know even each of them. <laughs> so before you start chaos testing, it's great to define your system behavior, uh, how it behaves under stable conditions. Then define the metrics which you are going to be using. Uh, define what you are expecting as outcome, and what are the acceptable outcomes, and what are not. Uh, and then you can proceed to injecting chaos. While you are injecting the chaos and running those uh, scenarios, you should analyze uh, and collect data about your cluster, about how, uh, the metrics and how the comp uh, all the components in your cluster are working, what are they doing, how they are behaving. And then use these data to analyze uh, them and improve on them your system. And of course, repeat as necessary. So, you can use Kraken as a standalone Python program. Uh, you will just clone the repository from uh, Kraken house on GitHub, uh, then install dependencies, and then you can run it. Before running it, you should still like configure a few things. Or you can use container containerized version of uh, Kraken, which uh, then you will be using Kraken Hub, which is a wrapper around Kraken. Uh, or you can try to run it on Kubernetes or open, as a Kubernetes or OpenShift deployment, 
we do not recommend this uh, option because you could actually, with the chaos testing, interrupt uh, somehow this deployment and then it could lead to more chaos. <laughs> so, uh, how to use it? Before running, you can choose if you want to use Kerberos. It's a tool which helps monitor cluster health overall. Um, so, you can see how the cluster uh, behaves through the testing and after the testing, if it's recovered properly. You can, uh, you should, this you should, you should set the config file parameters. Uh, we have multiple templates, uh, but uh, like the main components is Crack and Kerberos performance monitoring, tunings, telemetry, elastic. For example, you can opt out that you don't want to use Kerberos. Uh, if there is going to be any some time, Left, I will show you how it looks like, but I'm running out of time. <laughs> and also change the parameters in scenarios. We have options, for example, that you want to aim this uh, on a specific deployment or specific namespace, or you want specific duration, how the chaos test should take. Uh, I definitely uh, suggest looking more in a demo of one of my colleague, or uh, looking in a chaos testing guide where it's like, Scenarios are more uh, in depth. Uh, we are talking about those scenarios more in depth, or how to generally use the Kraken more in depth. Uh, so, and if you have everything set up, you can actually start chaos testing. Uh, if you have no idea what you should uh, test, we have a utility in Kraken, which is Chaos Recommender, and it will recommend you what scenarios you should run on which port, deployment, namespace. Uh, it is better working if it's under some load, like, for example, usual traffic, then it's better to uh, run the chaos recommender and it will give you like, oh, maybe these components have some problems. Maybe these tests could help you to find what is wrong with them. Uh, if you are not confident, because as I mentioned, we are, on, or I didn't probably mention it, but we are actually trying to break the things uh, and we are breaking them in production. So maybe if you are not really confident with that, try s just one or two scenarios at once, look how it works and then when you are get uh, when you get more confident and uh, you know how to respond to things when they are breaking, then try using more scenarios because uh, usually in the real world, there is going to be much more than just one scenario happening at once. Uh, so it will give you, using multiple scenarios, much more better understanding how your cluster would work, uh, behave, how your application would behave. And it is generally, um, we advise uh, running the test manually, so you can really observe the behavior of your cluster in real time. Uh, and you know how the system responds. But uh, if you enable observability, for example, with Kerberos, you can look on the behavior of the cluster <laughs> after. So like, it's nece not necessary, but we uh, suggest it. So it is also needed to test responsibly because we are breaking things uh, in production. So try to minimize blast radius, have a backup plan. <laughs> So if something terrible happens, you know how to respond to it. And sometimes you maybe cannot uh, chaos this in production environment. So try at least uh, run the test in staging environments. And of course, continuous chaos testing, it's key to everything because uh, it's going to be changing all the time the infrastructure and everything. So you need to know if it's uh, reliable at this moment. So in conclusion, definitely be rather proactive than, uh, re uh, than re uh, reactive. Uh, follow the methodologies. There is a reason why those exist. Uh, please practice chaos testing safely. Uh, test continuously and use those uh, analyzed data to harden your system. And there are some helpful resources like our GitHub, uh, chaos testing guide. We have uh, a few 
papers like Introduction to Crack and a Chaos uh, Tool for OpenShift and Kubernetes and OpenShift Kubernetes Chaos Stories. Those stories are actually real-time usage of Kraken. And you can find us on Kubernetes like under Kraken. So really thank you for listening and do you have any questions? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, so uh, how does it work actually? Uh, we have multiple scenarios and some of them work similarly and some of them work differently because we sometimes we need to deploy our own pod which is run as a root, for example, with root privileges. Sometimes it's just the uh, change of the uh, packet loss, simulating packet loss. So each of the scenarios works a little bit different. And uh, so I can't give you any uniform answer to it. But uh, as I mentioned in the chaos guide scenarios, we are actually talking more in depth about each of the scenarios which is there. So I think if you have some specific one, you can look into more, more into that. Uh, there was more. Yeah. Well, uh, we are aiming it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> if we can use it on bare metal or just on containers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, aimed to work, especially for Kubernetes. So anything which is running as Kubernetes, it should work on. Uh, and we have like support for OpenShift as well. But because we try to make it more for Kubernetes and more uniform for more systems, we had to uh, get rid of some uh, specific things for OpenShift, some stuff which were working just for OpenShift. I have no idea if it's answered to your question. Maybe one of my colleagues could help you more. So maybe ask on the Slack. So, yeah. Is there a broken list of like, issues somewhere in this town? Uh, do you have any top issues like bugs, fixes, not happening? Or when are you doing the same thing? Oh, uh, the chaos test stories are talking about some specific cases which happen, what they found. Uh, but I don't have, I don't know if we have something which is like, uh, like rank, which is updating regularly. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, the question was if we have some top rank of the issues we found. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I don't know if there are any more questions. Maybe we can like stop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.